Good morning, church. And welcome to Bloomfield Congregational Church, where no matter who you are, no matter where you are from, no matter where you are right now, if you are looking to learn more about love, if you are looking to learn more about hope, what that can do for your life, what that can do for the world in these times, if you're looking for a little sense of peace and calm in the midst of the storm, you have come to the right place, and you are welcome here no matter what. I'm Pastor Sean, and I'm glad that you are here today. Just a couple of announcements before we get going. Today, as many of you know, we are celebrating Thanksgiving Sunday, and we are doing this a little earlier than we normally do because the social service agencies for whom we are giving this food and the people who need that, we need to get that to them this week, and so we couldn't wait until next week to do that, and we are returning to a beloved tradition that we weren't able to do during COVID, and it's so wonderful to be able to do this again. During the opening hymn, you are invited to walk forward down the center aisle. Please do not come down the sides. Down the center aisle to place the food down here and then to return around the center aisles as we do this. After that, um, we will have our unison prayer and then I will do a blessing of the food and then everyone who is part of the organizing party who's going to take the food out of here and start that process is welcome to uh, take the food after the blessing of the food while the special music is going on. Uh, welcome. Hello. <laughs> I love this place. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. We have a new newsletter that has just come out. It, it was emailed on Friday. It will be mailed to you this week, and there are also copies laying out there, so if you would like to grab one, please do. If you know other people who might be interested in our community of faith, this is a wonderful way to show people what we are about. Leave it somewhere, put it in somebody's house, send it to them, do something to increase people's awareness of what we are doing here as a community of faith. So now, let us take a moment to pause as we have even more people joining the service today. So welcome everybody and come on in. No apology necessary. We are grateful to have everybody here. No matter who you are, no matter when you get here. So let us take a moment to try to lay aside the things that are weighing us down. The worries that may be weighing on our hearts or our shoulders or our minds. God has a gift here for you today. I don't know if it's the person sitting near you or next to you or something that will be given to you by the Holy Spirit or something else entirely, but I know there is something there for you. And I know that it's good. So now, let us join together as we say our call to worship. Jesus says, do not worry. So much is going on that is hard, that is stressful. Maybe, just maybe, Jesus is talking about something different. Let us come together in worship to listen to what Jesus has to say so that maybe, just maybe, we will understand what he means when he says, do not worry. Now let us join together in singing our opening hymn as we also bring whatever our gifts are forward.
join in our saying of the unison prayer. There are so many things going on in our world that are scary. There are so many things going on in our lives that are difficult. There are so many things, so many things, so many things. It's hard not to worry. Your son, Jesus, tells us not to worry. Yet you gave us emotions and the ability to worry. There must be something more to what he is saying. Help us to understand what you are trying to say through Jesus. I don't want to worry about worrying anymore. Someone just before service said they were having a difficult time, that their day was frustrating, and that they left work, and right in front of them, when they pulled out of the parking lot, was another car right in front of them, and it had a license plate, and it said gratitude. I just love how those moments happen, how we focused on gratitude, and how this day of Thanksgiving Sunday means so much because blessing and thanks and giving and gratitude are so important in our faith, in our life, and how we are going to build the kingdom of God in our hearts and in this world. It is a combination of thanks and giving that makes thanksgiving and makes things like this happen. I don't know how you feel. I am so grateful that we were able to do this today that a year ago when we couldn't, that now we begin to see the pieces of the opening, the pieces of the hope that comes with all of this. And so let us take a moment, and in any way that is comfortable for you, lift up your spirits, whether you put up a hand or just a thought, or your hands are up or your heads are up or down, whatever way is good for you as we do the blessing of all that has been given here. Gracious God, thank you for all the people who have contributed to this Thanksgiving food that is going to go into the Thanksgiving boxes of so many people. Between the Thanksgiving boxes and what we're doing with the town and what we're doing, it's going to be over 300 families who are touched by this community of faith. And this, a part of it, and the money that was donated here and other monies that have been donated will be enough to take care of that many People, Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the food. Thank you for the people who grew the food. Thank you for the seeds and the people who processed it and canned it or put anything together and the people who went out and bought it and came to this church today and brought it forward. Thank you to the people who are going to take it out and then go organize it and spend the next three days getting those ready to bring to social services, who will bring it to the people, who will have a Thanksgiving meal that they otherwise would not have had, that will bring joy to what would have been an otherwise sad day, where they would have worried where their Thanksgiving meal was coming from. Thank you for the ability to give. May this food be specially blessed. May the Holy Spirit bless this food. May the Holy Spirit Bless everyone here in the sanctuary, everybody online, anybody who gave, whether you gave something or didn't, whether you give in a different way, all of you, may this place and this food and the people who eat it and have it and have a wonderful day be blessed by you, by your son, Jesus Christ, in whatever form they need to see of you. With the Holy Spirit flowing through their house on Thanksgiving. Amen. Anybody who is tasked with having this go out for the organization is welcome to take that, or if we're going to leave it, that's fine too. But we are now going to enjoy the singing of Scott and Katie Troyer singing Stand in Your Love. And as always, if you pick up the chorus, you're welcome to sing along with the song. Good morning, Bloomfield. i 
ice tries to roll over my bones And when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own And when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken join together for the pastoral prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. God of peace and God of grace, God who wants good and is good and wants it for all of God's creation, we are grateful that you are here with us now. Please be with this community of faith and all communities of faith. Help us to be places of boldness, of truth, justice, and love. We ask your intervention and help for our medical community and first responders, for those who are grieving, for those who are suffering from heart attacks or cancer to COVID to violent attacks. And today we especially acknowledge that we have passed over 761,000 people who have died due to COVID. The diagnosis of COVID, not even counting those people who died because there weren't enough beds or because there were resources deferred from that. And the over 5 million people who have died worldwide. 
Please be with all of those who experienced loss of loved ones or loss of a sense of security. Help us to be bold in hope to help build the kingdom of God, even and especially in times such as these. Help us to be better stewards of your creation, including this planet, and help us commit to make the kinds of changes that will turn the tide before it is too late. We ask you to draw close to those who are struggling financially, those who are dealing with addiction, those who are dealing with mental illness, that we may not compound their struggle by having stigma and shame added on top of it. We pray for anyone who's just feeling stressed or down in these times, and for those who are struggling or feel along, alone or like they don't belong. May we help let everyone, may we reach out to let everyone know that they are loved by you and that they are welcome and belong here. Please be with each of us to discern your will and to call up the courage to choose you and your way, a way that inspires, a way that will save us and the world. And now together, as Jesus himself taught us, let us pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. going to read to you the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your, your body, what you will wear. Is life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about your clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, either Solomon, in all of his glory, was not clothed by, like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the fields, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all of these things, and indeed, your heavenly Father knows you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The word of God for God's people. When this passage came up for me to preach, 
I knew that there was one person who was either going to roll their eyes or wonder how I was going to pull this conversation off, and that's my wife, Linda. And the reason that I knew that is that she knows that I worry a lot. I worry a lot. In my pocket right now is what is called a worry stone. I don't know if any of you are familiar with these. It is a comfortable thing that sometimes if I'm worrying, I can rub on this and it distracts me from the worry and allows me to focus on some of the things that I would be doing otherwise. And the fact is that when I am worrying, I'm not getting the things that I really need to get done, done. And another problem in this, in this situation is that I end up worrying about worrying. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever worried about worrying? It is, it is one of the worst feelings that you can have. But one of the reasons that I feel confident about coming forward as a pastor and preaching Sunday after Sunday isn't because I get it right. It is because I feel comfortable doing this preaching thing and coming forward and talking about these things because I get it wrong all the time. I have so much experience at getting things wrong that I have this wealth of things to draw from so that I can say, you know what, I get it too. I get it too and I feel it and just because I'm doing this and preaching about it doesn't mean that I haven't gone through this or still go through this. And so, as we talk about this, remember, I am not saying that I've got this figured out. I'm just with you, and I hope there's something valuable to say. And see, part of what I do, as you know, is Jesus has called me to build the kingdom of God. Right? And this is Jesus talking to me, and you know it's me because there's not very much brown hair there, and there's this cheesy little facial hair that I'm working on, right? Right here that I'm doing for my trip to Italy as we're going to go visit Garrett. And so Jesus is saying, build the kingdom of God. And you know I talk about this a lot because that's the central message of Jesus, to build the kingdom of God here in the place that we are and the places that we can touch now during the time that we are around. And I'm like, all oh, right, right on. I am totally into this question. I think it's a beautiful message. I think it makes the Gospels and the whole Bible make sense when sometimes there are these tortured interpretations of the Bible. And so I'm like, all right, Jesus, how do we do that? And Jesus is like, change everything. And I'm reminded of the joke that someone sent me when I went to my first parish before I was blessed to be able to be called here to Bloomfield Congregational, and they sent me this comic, and it said, we would like you, our new pastor, to improve the financials, to grow the membership, to bring more people into attendance, to increase our stature in the community, to increase the foundation and the funding and the treasury and all that kind of stuff, but we don't want you to change anything. Because a lot of people don't like change. People worry about change. I'm not a huge fan of change. Right, so I get this. It's like, how do we do that? Change everything. And I start to worry about that. And Jesus is like, but don't worry. Change everything, but don't worry. And I'm like, what? What? How do you do that? So let's see what Jesus has for me and you in the scripture today. Verse 25 of Matthew 6. Therefore, yeah, we're going to stop on the first word. Therefore, therefore is one of those kind of pay attention words. Right? Sometimes we toss away these words that don't seem like they're so important, like and or but, or then, or therefore. These are, if they could have back then, these would have been blinking, pay attention, pop-up image type of things that would have popped up in a 
Bible back then if they had had that technology. Therefore, it means pay attention because whatever I'm saying next is based on stuff I said before. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of what Jesus was building them up to before it got to the scripture. And in verses 22 and 23, he was talking about the spiritual eye and the health of the spiritual eye. Not talking about literal blindness and physical blindness, but the spiritual eye. And it said, if your eyes are so darkened, if your eyes are so damaged spiritually that you are just focusing on the trappings of life, on money and your appearance and how you look and what you are eating and the status that comes with that, then you are not going to be able to let the light of God in to see what life is actually about, to see what you're going to be able to do to decrease the problems in your life. But if you open up and let the light in, then spiritual light will come into your eyes and you will be able to see God, this is my representation of God, right? We can't really imagine what God actually looks like, but this is my representation of that. So if our eyes are darkened, we're going to be focused on the trappings of life. And if we focus and we have and we allow that light of the Spirit and the light to come in, we're going to be able to have a better chance of seeing God. And once we see one or the other of things, these are going to be what drive our lives. And what Jesus says in verse 24 is you can't have both as your priorities. One is going to be your master or the other is going to be your master. You can't have two masters. You're either going to favor the one and not favor the other or the other way around. So if you make this the focus, the trappings of life the focus, you're not going to be able to prioritize following God. And if you make your priority following God, you're going to see the trappings of life incredibly differently than you would if you're looking through the non-spiritual eye. And then Jesus is always saying this, and it's very frustrating when you'd like to just have it all. Or you'd like to wiggle out of some of the stuff he's trying to do that's uncomfortable, that makes us do uncomfortable things and change and do uncomfortable things. Jesus says, you have to choose. You can't, you can't have both of these be your focus. It doesn't mean that you can't have money and still love God. It doesn't mean you can love God and still not have money. It says, what is going to be the focus and the priority and the driving factor of your life and how you feel about things that are happening in your life? So let's get beyond the first word. But not, not bad how you can go with just one trigger word there. So, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. This is how this starts. The problem with this is that's not an accurate translation. In the New Revised uh, Standard Version, it's going through a new translation, uh, as are a lot of other Bibles, and two of the newest uh, that have come out say something a little different. Do not be over-concerned about eating and clothing. Do not be over-concerned about eating and clothing. It doesn't talk about the life aspect at all, and it says, another one says, this is why I tell you not to be worried about what you are eating and the clothes you wear. It's not that Jesus is saying that there's no worry in your life. That's what leads to this, this idea that Jesus is telling us that, look, don't worry about anything. And that's what leads to, if you're worrying, and then You think, and you remember that Jesus says not to worry. That's where that worrying about worrying thing kicks in. Because Jesus told me not to worry, but I'm worrying. Oh, my goodness. And it doubles down, and it makes things entirely worse. And he's saying, don't worry about the clothes and the food and the trappings of life. Now, I am not, he's not saying that food doesn't matter. Not saying that food doesn't matter. For some people, food absolutely matters for enjoyment and some for Survival, and he's not saying that, that we're supposed to be running around naked everywhere, right? He's not saying there's not supposed to be clothes. But he is also not saying that he's, you know, God's not all of a sudden, if we stop worrying about clothes and food, God, God's not going to start dropping pizza and khakis around for everybody here, right? Like, so, so we got to put this kind of thing in context and the general understanding of what's going to be happening. He is saying, 
that these should not be our overriding focus, your overriding focus in your life. Jesus is saying, don't make these your priorities. Because he's saying life is more than food. Life is more than food. And for some people, it is not. For some people, it is not. Because there are some people in the world for whom they have to dedicate their entire life just to have enough food to survive for that day. And we are the people who are the ones who are supposed to help those people so they can get beyond that state. But for most of us, life is not about food, and the body is not all about clothing. And when Jesus says this, one of the things we have to look at is, is this one of his kind of sidebar things that he's telling us about, or is this one of the core things that he wants us to really pay attention to? And the answer is, Jesus says, I'm serious. And one of the ways that we know Jesus is serious is when he repeats himself with the same words or different words in the same passage. And in verse 28, it says again, why do you worry about clothing? And he's back to clothing because it's a matter of status. A matter of status symbol. Sometimes people use clothing as a matter of sinking and leveling and putting people in one place or another, identifying them in one class or another, and judging them based on how they are dressed. And they're saying, don't be that way. And then he talks about, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Spinning refers to spinning and doing work to create thread, to create cloth, to create clothes, saying, don't work so hard at trying to make yourself look amazing. Don't focus so much on those trappings of life. And then he goes on to verse 31 to say, therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we where? So he has hit this theme several times in this passage of don't doing, meaning pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. This matters. I'm serious about that. And he gets to his point. In verse 33, but strive first for the kingdom of God. Strive first for the kingdom of God. Keep seeking the kingdom of God above all else. Seek you the kingdom of God above all else. When we do that, when we focus on the kingdom of God first, the priorities around everything else begins to fall into place. But Jesus isn't saying there won't be stress or worry or anxiety in this world. Jesus knows that exists. And he says it right after he told us what to do. He's like, remember, though, I get it. I get it. There will be worries that come tomorrow. There will be things that come tomorrow. So don't add to it. There's stuff you can't control that is going to come, that is going to drive concern or worry or anxiety for one reason or another. Just don't add to it yourself because there's enough out there in the world for you already. One translation says each day has its own quite sufficient supply of evil that we need to work on. So why add to our own distractions? To that. This passage is all about trying for us to get our scrambled priorities straight. When we have our priorities out of order, it's hard to understand what our priorities are. It's hard to understand what we're supposed to do. If I was looking at this, this would give me a little stress, trying to figure out what that was. I saw some people looking at that and said, what is that, and getting concerned they couldn't figure it out. Because it's confusing when we don't have our priorities straight. The way to reduce stress, the way to reduce worry, the way to reduce anxiety in your life 
is to have the priorities straight. And the priorities straight are following the way of Jesus, which is building the kingdom of God. And when we do that, the places where our hearts or our eyes are not able to see the spiritual light begins to get in, and we begin to see God in sharper focus and the existence of the kingdom of God and the potential of the kingdom of God in sharper focus, and that drives us to actions. And when we act, our worries go down. When we act, in the purpose and the mission of the kingdom of God and helping other people, our stress and our worries and our anxieties go down. And I know there are some people here who wonder whether you are going to have purpose and meaning in your life. You question that, or you wonder at some point in your life, are you going to have meaning and purpose in your life? Dave Nail, Dave Nail does not go, this is coming, Dave Nail, who can help you not have that worry? Absolutely. Absolutely. Dave was concerned when he retired that he'd be waiting to die. Be waiting to die. David, how do you feel about that now? I solved that problem. That's what he said. He said, I solved that problem. Right? Because we have so much to do here. There is so much good going on here that you and each person here has the ability to do that if you ever have that sense that I don't have purpose in my life or meaning in my life, you just let us know and we will find direction for that. Because there are a lot of people who are hurting. People who are having their dignity stripped away because they don't have what society says are the right kinds of clothing. People whose dignity has been stripped away because they are in a food desert and can't get the kind of food to put on the table, and they look at their children, and even if they put on a brave face, they are having their dignity stripped away. In this church, many people here are focused on not just solving some of these issues, but focusing on the dignity of people. Because when the dignity of people is restored, they are empowered, and then they become part of the cloud of witnesses and the cloud of people who make a difference in this world, and then they see purpose, and they start to see the spiritual light, and they start to become part of building the kingdom of God. There is a lot to do to help people in this community and in the world. There is plenty to do, but the wonderful thing is, this church, you, me, all of us together, are incredibly well positioned to do what we have been doing and much, much more. So if there's something that you want to do, if there's something missing in your life, and you want to help be part of building this kingdom of God right here, right now. There is plenty to do, and we are well positioned to do it. Don't worry about that. Amen. So I'm going to give folks the opportunity to lift up any joys you have today. Does anybody have a joy here today that you would like to lift up here in the congregation? Yes. Good health insurance. Yes. We're going to see Garrett. <laughs> My son is a, in a study abroad in Italy, and Linda and I are going to be going to visit him for a little while. Um, our good friend and phenomenal pastor, Reverend Mia Douglas, will be here for the next two Sundays. She will also be taking care of any parish care and pastoral care emergencies, so we will make sure that you're able to reach her, or you can reach her through the office, or reach out to uh, any of the deacons who will know how to reach 
uh, Reverend Douglas so that uh, any pastoral care emergencies are addressed because my phone will be off. <laughs> any other joys? That's, we're getting to that. Hold on, hold on to that one. Other joys, come on. I know there's more joys in this place. I know there's more joys. Yes. Yes, thank you for everyone who is involved in putting together the 750 Lights Vigil, representing the 750,000 people who had died due to COVID. We know it is more than that, but we've put symbols up there to also acknowledge that this is continuing, knowing that is the case. Thank you for those who organized it, participated, and came to the vigil last night, despite that epic storm <laughs> that came through. Uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful Thing. And it stopped in time. That's exactly well. All right, short story about very short story about that. We were in the midst of deciding whether we were going to cancel or not because of that storm coming through. And Linda knows because I was worrying about this yesterday. Hence the worry stone that I had in my pocket. And we weren't sure, and she could tell that I was like under a degree of distress here. So, <laughs> so we were deciding, and then a friend of mine who was participating said, Remember, if two or more are gathered. And then I turned on my music, on my Apple music, and the song from Casting Crows, or Casting Crowns came on, I will praise you in the storm. And I got chills, and I said, well, that's that. And said, we're on, let's do it. <laughs> and went from there. Yes. This was? Wow. All right. Fantastic. Thank you for letting me know. I'll have to look up, look, look that up. So, Dave, you kept trying to put your hand up, and then I just. Thank you very much. We have one other joy that we would like to let you know. We are announcing the birth of Sage De Hoyos. The baby and mom are doing great, but it has not yet been reported how Sawyer is taking it. <laughs> but we are overjoyed at this news and look forward uh, maybe sometime in Advent to be able to baptize uh, both of those children. They have approached us about that and are looking forward to being able to do that. So now that we are feeling this joyful, let us also be generous as we bring forward our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings in different forms. I know we don't come forward and we don't pass the plate in this way, but whether you use the Give button online, whether you bust out your phone and use Tidely, whether you put something in the boxes, I am unashamed of asking for your support for what we are doing to grow the kingdom of God. Amazing things are happening and more amazing things are happening, whether it is your money, or even if there's no money, if it's your time or your talent, we are grateful for everything you do. Now, please enjoy the music as we have our time of offering from our good friend, Reverend Mia Douglas.
God of grace, thank you. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for hope and for loving us, no matter who we are, no matter how much we worry, no matter what. Thank you for the wonderful 750 lights vigil last night, for everyone who made it happen and attended, and those who will continue to walk through it as we keep those lights up at night for people to see as they drive by or to walk through and feel the power of that memorial and of the hope of that light. Thank you for thanks and for giving that together makes Thanksgiving so powerful and special. Thank you for the new birth that takes place here in this congregation with the De Hoyos family and so many other people throughout the world. May those new lives be profoundly blessed, and may we take on that responsibility to protect them so that they have a world to live in that is beautiful. Thank you for all people who sacrifice a bit of themselves for the kingdom 
of God and that when we do it, that you have created the world in such a way that when we follow your way, our worries, our anxieties and stresses become less and less and less until our spiritual eyes see you so clearly that we have no need for it at all. Thank you for the gifts that are given here today. May the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does, which is to take those gifts and multiply them in ways we cannot possibly imagine, impacting people we both know and will never know. And so now, let us join together as we sing our closing hymn, Let All Things Now Living. invited to our in-person social time and coffee hour that will take place in the hallway because other people and some of you may be organizing all the food and sorting the kind of food that we have here to get ready for the Thanksgiving boxes to be given away this week. But before that, the benediction. May love bless you and keep you. May love make its face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and be gracious unto you. May love lift up its countenance, its countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace. Go in peace.